All right, guys, it's your boy AK, and I'm back here with another video for y'all today. And before we get started on today's video, if you would smash that like button and hit that subscribe button for me, it'd be much appreciated. Today's video is a series of videos entitled Bringing Texas Back. It's a series of videos about what it would take for Texas to be quote unquote back, which has become ever so famous as of recent. Uh, the first thing Texas needs to do to be quote unquote back is we need to come together as a rebuilt coaching staff and develop the players that we have on our current roster. Um, let's see Jordan Whittington become that polished receiver. Uh, I want to see what he did in the Quero State Championship in 2018. I want to see that come out. Uh, I want to see that athletic ability come out and play for us in the University of Texas Longhorns. Uh, I want to see Kirkyandre Colburn be the best interior D lineman in the Big 12. Uh, I think we've all seen it. He has that potential. He has that ability. Uh, I've seen flashes of it, and I want to see it come in at a more snap-to-snap -snap basis. Uh, I want to see Mike Yurich, our new offensive coordinator. Uh, I want to see him calling the plays, giving up the uh, – the reins of the power from uh, from the head coach. Uh, I want to see his power spread. You know, I want to see his new in, in, nuances when he has in store for us and that new power spread. Uh, he likes to see uh, mismatches with his multi-positioned players, uh, like we mentioned about uh, Jordan Winnington, uh, just now moving to uh, the wide receiver, playing in the, the big slot, moving from running back. Uh, I want to see the six foot six Malcolm Epps, who just recently moved from wide receiver to tight end. Uh, the only coach that we did retain from our previous coaching staff, from the 2019 staff, is our O line coach, uh, Coach Herb Hand. So there's been lots of uh, changes and lots of nuances there. So it's important for me, uh, for all of our new staff, and our players to congeal, get to know one each other, and implement their systems uh, in place for the 2000 season. Uh, next, what we have in line as far as importance here, Texas needs we need to keep on grinding uh, on that recruiting cycle. Uh, as everybody knows, recruiting is the lifeblood for every program. Uh, so here, uh, to kind of sort of give an example of, on uh, that, I have uh, on our current 2020 commit list, kind of sort of from top to bottom here, uh, we need to keep on track with old uh, Jatavion Sanders. We need to keep these guys in the loop, make sure they stay committed, make sure they stay on Texas, you know, make sure they want to stay a part of our program and not get loose to suit to another different school, to one of our rivals. Uh, his teammate, Billy Bowman, uh, athlete, Denton Ryan, Texas, 5'10", 175. Um, I, move, I hear they're probably going to move him to uh, cornerback. You see uh, more of his potential on the uh, defensive side of the ball there. Uh, next in line is old Jalen Monroe. Uh, he is a uh, quarterback from Tompkins, Katy, Texas, dual threat, uh, six one and a half. Many people believe that he is the top-rated quarterback in the state of Texas. Uh, Derek, Hades, Derek Harris Jr., excuse me. He's uh, going to be an outside linebacker from New Caney, Texas, uh, playing for New Caney High School over there. Uh, six foot two, 215 pounds. He's the uh, national-rated 148 player, four-star athlete. It's a guy that we need to maintain. Offensive lineman here, offensive tackle from Katy, Texas. Uh, Hayden Connor, offensive lineman. We need those road graders. Protect Sam, help out in the running game. Keep the defense off the field. This, this last one is going to be my guy, the Everman, uh, the person I'm keeping track of the most, Mr. Juan Davis. If you watch him on film, uh, you don't have to look at the arrow. No one has to point out who he is. He, he's always the big guy in the field. Uh, they have him listed as an athlete, six foot four, two twenty, uh, going as a tight end, 
that's what they have them potentially going for as of right now. Uh, something else that we need to uh, keep in track on is uh, players that haven't yet committed to the University of Texas but are on our watch list. Um, guys that we've had quite some contact with that we need to keep in track as well. Uh, some of the guys that come uh, to mind here is Tommy Brockenmeyer. Uh, he's going to be one of the offensive linemen, the legend twins. Uh, this guy's important. Uh, big time recruit here, uh, number seven or number four overall for the 21 uh, class, depending on which list you're looking at. Uh, from uh, here in Fort Worth, All Saints Episcopal. Uh, coming in next, uh, Savion Bird, another offensive lineman, OT out of Duncanville, I believe. Offensive tackle, big guy, six foot six, rangy, 265 pounds. You need to keep him on the list. Keep him in our uh, thoughts. Make sure everybody knows that he's a recruit that we're looking at, that he's important to us. Who else? Uh, we got JoJo Earl, the shifty fast wide receiver, slot receiver from uh, Alito, Texas. Great route running ability, great hands, quick off the line. Uh, you need that guy. Uh, Quay Davis, you need to come back to us, buddy. From Skyline, um, kind of a harder guy to recruit here. Um, his quarterback play over there in Skyline, Skyline is a bit uh, questionable at times, to uh, say the least. He's a prospect that's kind of sort of harder to uh, evaluate due to that. He's someone who uh, committed to the University of Texas. We had some of that turmoil that we heard about, that I described about earlier with our coaching staff being completely revamped. Uh, and he... Uh, Decommitted from us, so he's kind of sort of back on our watch list. We're watching him. He's watching us. Definitely under both of our radar. Uh, let's see who else we got here for potentials. Jordan Thomas. You just need to hurry up and uh, come to us, buddy. You need to hurry up and get that uh, commitment from us. Uh, we decide defensive end Jordan Thomas is. Uh, he is... Six foot three, 240 pounds, weak side defensive end. Uh, someone that, that needs to hurry up and just sign with us. You know, if you look at his crystal ball commitment, excuse me, crystal ball prediction, they have him at a, as 100% to Texas. He just needs to go ahead and uh, commit here to us. And uh, this next group of players here, here guys, I have is uh, we need to compile and recruit new and future targets. Uh, these are going to go ahead and be... Uh, Three of these guys are targets that we have yet to even look at and a couple of ones that we've lost in focus with and that we need to get in touch with. Um, so players that we haven't offered yet that I feel that we should. Uh, Kevin Coleman, wide receiver, 5'11", 170 pounds, out of St. Mary's High School, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I think that's important because he's coming from Missouri. Um, it's a state that doesn't have a very strong... Uh, football program on board in state, uh, Missouri being the only strong football program they have in there. Uh, they're in the SEC, but they're obviously not that dominant of a program. Uh, he's a four-star uh, recruit there out of Missouri. Uh, what we'll have on him, he's a great tough kid, uh, runs, great run, runs great routes, and uh, can block downfield for one of those running backs that we want to uh, spring out for one of those long, explosive plays. Next, we have Wilfredo. Wilfredo! Wilfredo Abar is a weak side defensive end. He's uh, six foot three, 220 pounds. Uh, he's out of Cheshire, Connecticut. Uh, being from Connecticut, he's going to be a bit up there in the northeast, a bit there, obviously. But with Connecticut being not a strong state for overall football recruiting, normally I think this would be a kid that we can go up there and plug and get. And I uh, take that from. Uh, Take that from uh, the Connecticut area. His elite level athleticism on this kid, quick, explosive off the ball. Um, again, great hands. Uh, doesn't let those offensive linemen really put them hands on them. Uh, pushes out with that swat and swim move. <laughs> you know, they like to uh, teach these days. Um, I think this one is, uh, this next guy, he's really important. Um, I looked at this next guy. He only has five offers. and He's a four-star in the uh, 2020 recruiting class as well. And this is uh, Devon Jackson, 
uh, outside linebacker, six foot two, uh, from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, he's a four star recruit there. Um, like I said, what I like about him is that he only has a, a couple of schools looking at him already. He's only, he's only been offered by five other schools, I believe. So uh, with Nebraska not really holding its home state there and that big powerhouse tradition that they normally have, you know, the big red machine isn't really running these days. So I think it's really important that we go in there and potentially pluck that kid. Um, this next one uh, is going to be our newest commit. Uh, excuse me, not commit, our newest um, kid that is, is on our watch list, our new offer list, excuse me. Uh, this is going to be uh, Jaden Greathouse. What a good name. Uh, not really a hard pickup slash find for us here. Uh, six foot three, tight end out of Austin Westlake. He's our newest guy that we've offered yet as of what my research has shown, what I've uh, picked up. Um, this next one uh, is going to be a kid from Kansas. His name is uh, Desan McCullough. Uh, he's in, they have him listed as an athlete. Uh, he's playing, currently playing uh, safety, and he's going to be in the 2023 20, class. Obviously, you know, just a young pup now. He's kind of still developing his skills, getting to know his feet, uh, getting big, his legs under him and stuff like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But they have him a six foot four, 210-pound athlete from Blue Valley North High School in Leawood, Kansas. Uh, what I like about uh, that Kansas uh, prospect out of there is that he is from Kansas. Uh, I mean, that, that Kansas only has uh, K-State and the Jayhawks there. Um, both are going to be in the Big 12, but not really big powerhouse schools. I think Texas can go in there, uh, wine and dine that kid, uh, woo him a little bit more, and uh, potentially take him away from uh, that in-home state. With that being said, he obviously has the big boys looking at him as well, uh, i.e. Alabama, Georgia, Florida. But you just got to take a stab at some of these kids, you know. These are uh, new prospects, you know, going outside of the state of Texas you know, to uh, take a stab. And uh, so I kind of sort of have this question for you. Uh, Shermar Stewart is the number one uh, rated player in all of the 2020 class. Number one rated player from Mossingor. I probably just butchered that high school in Opelosha, Florida. Maybe that's why they haven't found him. Who knows where Opelosha is. But he's the number one rated player in all the 2020 class. And the University of Texas hasn't even offered him. It's not like he's this random new recruit that is uh, new, fresh on the scene. He's the number one rated player, and Texas hasn't offered him. I just don't really understand that. Um, so on this recruiting, I have a couple questions here for you, for the old uh, keyboard warriors here. Uh, who would you like uh, Texas to offer next? You know what I mean? Who were uh, some of your thoughts about who, you, who would you like us to uh, go after next as far as uh, Texas recruiting-wise? And uh, who would you like to see Texas recruit harder? You know, uh, one of the guys in the back of your mind that has fallen off the list or you're not really seen on uh, the reports of uh, who's going to 40 Acres, who's uh, making these uh, visits on campus, being contacted by the coaches and whatnot, who's been falling off the radar. I want to know who you would like to see Texas record, excuse me, uh, recruit a little bit harder. So if you put that in your comments below, I'd kind of sort of appreciate that. Uh, kind of sort of start wrapping this up. Uh, on the third thing, I would like to see Texas do for the 2020 season that needs to get Texas quote unquote back is number one, we need to beat LSU, you know. We need to beat LSU. We need to beat LSU on September 12th. I know I've said that many times. Uh, we need to go into Baton Rouge, into Death Valley, and take down the Tigers. Um, that needs to happen. Um, I think that we can do it. Uh, they're not the same team as they were last year. Uh, they lost 16 players, I believe, to the draft. Um, but 
that being said, one of those is big boy uh, Joe Burrow, who uh, lit the nation on fire last year with 60 combined overall touchdowns. Basically destroyed every single category ever known to offensive football ever created in the history of mankind. Uh, and uh, his uh, partner in crime, uh, Joe Brady, the offensive coordinator, because I don't know if you really remember that, but before Joe, Mr. Joe Brady came along, uh, the LSU Tigers just used to smash into uh, defensive lines with their running game and didn't really have much of an offensive passing game. So that's something that needs to be addressed and alerted is that they're not the same team as uh, they were from last year. Uh, we need to win the Big 12 championship. Uh, that needs to happen. Uh, that is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Oklahoma has gone in and reeled off five in a row Big 12 straight titles. I repeat, five years in a row Texas has not won the Big 12. It has been Oklahoma Sooners five years in a row that needs to end this year. Uh, we need to take that dominance out of OU's hands and put it back in our own. Um, I believe that we can do that with the leadership of uh, Sam Ellinger, our general, our leader, QB1, uh, coming into his fourth year as a starter. Uh, you know, I believe that is the most important thing that we have going on. A lot of the times when it comes down to the fourth quarter, you have a close ball game between two even teams, it's going to come down to QB1. It's going to come down to quarterback. And here you have leading your team. Uh, another big difference in, into coming into uh, next year, uh, this year, than last year was, is uh, the running back, the backfield. Um, last year, coming into the LSU game, we were completely obliterated. Uh, we had one and a half running backs. Uh, last year, going into the season, all we had was uh, Keontae, uh, who ended up being a stud for us uh, this past year, and uh, Roshan Johnson, who... Uh, who had a great season for us, probably with uh, along with Jake Smith, our 1-1A one one best uh, offensive freshman of the year for us last year. But uh, going to that in LSU game, we were hurt. Uh, we only had one full-time scholarship running back. Like I said, we had to move Roshan Johnson from the quarterback room to the running back room just to have a stable of running backs, just to be able to have running backs on the field. Keontae can't play every single play. So this year we're much going to be healthy and improved with Keontae coming into his junior year, coming in healthy. Uh, now that no Sean Moreno, excuse me, no Sean, uh, Roshan Johnson, excuse me, <clears throat> has had a full year behind him being a running back. Uh, he has much more experience, can pick up the blitz better, can come out of the backfield and be a versatile playmaker, uh, catching the football for us. I think he, he's going to add a lot from coming out for that backfield as well. And uh, not to uh, mention the guy we got coming in. Uh, it's hard not to smile when you're talking about this guy, really. Uh, we got the playmaker. We got the versatile guy. Uh, we got the guy coming in uh, from Arizona, the number one uh, rated five-star running back in this past recruiting class, uh, 2019. Uh, he's three-time 2,000-yard rusher there in the state of Arizona. Bijan Robinson, you know, him coming in as our potentially third uh, guy coming in out of the backfield. So we'll see how he gets in the mix, see how many carries he gets, and see what he brings to us in Texas. Uh, it's kind of hard not to uh, smile and think about the things to come with uh, him. I'm going to end this video with one last question, so please comment down below. I just want to know, what is the single most effective act Texas can do leading up to and throughout the 2020 season? Uh, that's going to be a wrap for uh, this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the Eyes on Texas channel and hit that post notification bell. I'm AK, and I will be posting videos frequently, so keep your head on a swivel and your eyes on Texas.